Xyloth gripped his chest, his three hearts pounding as he stared in horror at the raging battle of twenty-two humans slamming together with cracking impacts that made him tremble in his tentacles. Xyloth, chief diplomat of planet Zandaria, thought his first cultural exchange mission would be smooth, but now he feared this football game might end him. His life hung in the balance. Beside Xyloth, human ambassador James Thompson smirked at his alien guest's frightened expression, amused, but also determined to use this outing to build a successful relationship between their species. Earth desperately needed advanced Zandarian technology and medicine to recover from decades of devastating wars and plagues. Thompson knew he had to gain Xyloth's trust and respect, or humanity might never recover. As Xyloth recoiled at another bone-crunching tackle on the field, a piercing shriek cut the air, but it was just a referee's whistle. This simple sporting match would be Xyloth's greatest challenge yet as a diplomat. He would face the intensity and chaos of human athletics, and he wasn't sure he would survive. The human players marched onto the field, clad in their bulky armor. Helmets concealed their faces and heavy pads covered their bodies. They split into two groups and lined up on opposite ends of the grassy plain, as if preparing for a military skirmish. Xyloth watched them with a mix of confusion and unease, uncertain of what was about to unfold. A whistle blew, and the two sides rushed at each other like enraged beasts. Xyloth jolted in his seat as they slammed together with a thunderous crash. The humans grappled with each other, their limbs entangled as they battled for dominance. One of the players, a mountain of a man, wrapped his arms around an opponent and lifted him into the air. With a roar of exertion, he drove the other player into the ground, the impact so violent that Xyloth could feel the vibrations from where he sat. The Zandarian diplomat's eyes widened in disbelief as the brutality unfolded before him. The humans showed no mercy as they threw each other to the grass. Bones crunched and joints popped as they twisted and contorted their bodies in ways that Xyloth had never seen before. It was like watching a pack of predators tear each other apart in a feeding frenzy. One particularly vicious collision caught Xyloth's attention. A human with the number 52 emblazoned on his jersey charged at another player, lowering his head like a battering ram. The force of the impact was so great that the recipient's helmet flew off, spinning through the air like a discarded toy. The player crumpled to the ground, his body limp and unmoving. Xyloth's hearts raced as he waited for the fallen human to stir, but seconds ticked by with no sign of life. After what felt like an eternity, the player slowly pushed himself to his feet, shaking his head groggily. Xyloth turned to Thompson, his voice trembling. Surely that human requires immediate medical attention. Will he be taken to a healing facility? Thompson let out a hearty laugh, clapping Xyloth on the shoulder. Now nah, that's just a regular hit. Happens all the time in football. He'll be back in the game before you know it. Xyloth stared at the human ambassador in disbelief. How could they treat such injuries so casually? On Zandaria, any citizen who suffered a blow like that would be rushed to a hospital for extensive treatment. As the game wore on, Xyloth's unease only grew. The hits seemed to get harder, the collisions more violent. Players threw themselves at each other with reckless abandon, their bodies slamming together with sickening thuds. Xyloth's tentacles twitched involuntarily every time he heard the crack of plastic against plastic. He couldn't wrap his mind around it. What possessed these humans to engage in such a dangerous activity? Did they not value their own lives? To Xyloth it seemed like sheer madness to risk serious injury or death for the sake of entertainment. The Xandarian diplomat's hearts pounded in his chest as he watched the chaos unfold. He had come here hoping to forge a bond with the humans, but now he wondered if he had made a terrible mistake. If this was how they treated each other in the name of sport, what horrors might they be capable of in the name of war? As the first half of the football game came to a close, Thompson turned to Xyloth with a grin. Hey, why don't we grab some grub during halftime? I'll show you some classic football game food. Xyloth, still reeling from the brutal display on the field, nodded hesitantly. Very well. I am curious to experience more of your human culture. The two made their way out of their seats and into the crowded concourse. Humans of all shapes and sizes milled about, 
many wearing jerseys emblazoned with the names and numbers of their favorite players. The air was thick with the smell of fried food and spilled beer. As they navigated through the throng of people, Xyloth found himself jostled by a group of particularly rowdy fans. One of them, a large man with a red face and glassy eyes, stumbled into the Zandarian, nearly knocking him off his feet. Watch where you're going, freak, the man slurred, his breath reeking of alcohol. Xyloth's tentacles curled in fear as he tried to put some distance between himself and the intoxicated human. Thompson stepped in, placing a hand on the man's chest and pushing him back. Hey, buddy, take it easy, the ambassador said, his voice calm but firm. We're all here to have a good time, right? The drunk man muttered something under his breath but backed off, disappearing into the crowd. Xyloth let out a shaky breath, his heart still pounding. I apologize for that, Thompson said, guiding Xyloth towards the concession stand. Some folks get a little too excited during these games. At the counter, Thompson ordered two beers and a pair of hot dogs. He handed one of each to Xyloth, who eyed the unfamiliar food with suspicion. The hot dog was nestled in a soft bun, topped with a stripe of yellow mustard and a sprinkling of diced onions. Xyloth sniffed it cautiously, his sensitive nostrils picking up the scent of meat and spices. Not wanting to offend his host, the Zandarian took a small bite. The flavors exploded on his tongue, a mix of salt, grease, and something he couldn't quite identify. The texture was strange, too, the meat both soft and slightly rubbery at the same time. Xyloth chewed slowly, trying to process the new sensations. It wasn't entirely unpleasant, but it certainly wasn't like anything he had ever tasted before. He swallowed, feeling the food slide down his throat and settle heavily in his stomach. As they made their way back to their seats, Xyloth's attention was drawn to a commotion near one of the exits. Two groups of fans, each wearing different team colors, were squared off against each other, shouting and gesticulating wildly. Oh, your team sucks, one of the men yelled, jabbing a finger at the other group. You're going down. Screw you, came the response, followed by a string of expletives that made Xyloth's ears burn. Before he could blink, the argument turned physical. Punches were thrown and bodies slammed into each other as the two groups brawled. Xyloth watched in horror as the humans pummeled each other mercilessly, their faces contorted with rage. Security personnel rushed in, pulling the combatants apart and dragging them away, but the damage had been done. Xyloth's mind reeled as he tried to process what he had just witnessed. These humans, who had seemed so civilized and advanced when he first arrived, now appeared to be little more than savages. They reveled in violence and aggression, both on the field and off. How could he possibly forge a meaningful relationship with a species that behaved in such a manner? As they took their seats once more, Xyloth found himself questioning everything he thought he knew about humanity. He had come here with high hopes, eager to learn and make new allies. But now, he wondered if he had made a terrible mistake. The second half of the game was about to begin, but Xyloth's mind was elsewhere. He couldn't shake the feeling that he was in over his head, that he had underestimated the challenges of dealing with such a volatile and unpredictable species. He glanced at Thompson who was sipping his beer and cheering as the teams retook the field. The human seemed oblivious to Xyloth's growing unease, lost in the excitement of the game. Xyloth took a deep breath, steeling himself for whatever lay ahead. He had a job to do and he would see it through, no matter how difficult it might be. But as the players collided once more, their bodies slamming together with sickening force, he couldn't help but wonder what kind of future awaited him and his people, if they lied themselves with the humans. As the second half kicked off, the intensity on the field reached a fever pitch. The players seemed to move with a newfound sense of urgency, their movements more aggressive and their hits more forceful. Xyloth watched as the humans crashed into each other like waves against a rocky shore, their bodies colliding with sickening thuds that reverberated through the stadium. The Zandarian's tentacles curled in discomfort as he witnessed a particularly brutal tackle. A human player, his jersey streaked with grass stains and sweat, launched himself at an opponent, 
with reckless abandon. The impact was so violent that Xyloth could have sworn he heard the crack of bone, even over the roar of the crowd. The targeted player hit the ground hard, his limbs splayed out at unnatural angles. He lay motionless on the turf, his helmet knocked askew. Xyloth's hearts raced as he waited for the human to move, to show some sign of life. But the seconds ticked by and still the player did not stir. Suddenly, a team of medical personnel rushed onto the field, their bright orange vests standing out against the sea of green. They huddled around the fallen player, obscuring him from view. Xyloth turned to Thompson, his voice trembling. Is he... is he going to be all right? The human ambassador shrugged, his eyes never leaving the field. Hard to say, looks like a pretty nasty hit. After what felt like an eternity, the medical team emerged from their huddle. They had the injured player strapped to a stretcher, his neck immobilized by a brace. As they carried him off the field, the crowd erupted in a mix of cheers and applause. Xyloth stared at Thompson in disbelief. How can they cheer? A sentient being was just gravely injured before their very eyes. Thompson sighed, leaning back in his seat. It's part of the game, Xyloth. These guys know the risks when they step onto the field, and trust me, they're well compensated for it. The Zandarian shook his head, unable to comprehend the human's nonchalance. On Zandaria, any injury, no matter how minor, was cause for great concern. The idea of celebrating such an event was unthinkable. As the game resumed, Xyloth found himself growing more and more uneasy. The hits seemed to come faster and harder, the players throwing themselves at each other with wild abandon. The crowd's cheers grew louder, their voices blending into a cacophony of noise that pounded against Xyloth's eardrums. The Zandarian's chest began to tighten, his breathing becoming laboured. He felt as though the walls of the stadium were closing in on him, the sea of human faces blurring together into a dizzying kaleidoscope. Xyloth gripped the armrests of his seat, his knuckles turning a pale shade of blue. He tried to take deep breaths, to calm the racing of his hearts, but it was no use. The sensory overload was too much, the unrelenting display of human aggression too overwhelming. As the final seconds of the game ticked away, Xyloth felt a wave of dizziness wash over him. The world seemed to tilt on its axis, the ground beneath his feet suddenly unstable. He turned to Thompson, his voice barely above a whisper. I, I don't feel well. I think I need to... But before he could finish his sentence, Xyloth's vision began to tunnel. The last thing he saw before the darkness claimed him was the human ambassador's face, etched with concern. The crowd erupted in a deafening roar as the final seconds ticked away on the clock. The home team's quarterback launched a desperate Hail Mary pass towards the end zone, the ball spiralling through the air as time expired. Xyloth watched in disbelief as a receiver leaped above a sea of defenders, snatching the ball out of the air and tumbling to the ground with the game-winning touchdown. But as the stadium exploded in celebration, Xyloth felt a sudden tightness in his chest. His vision blurred and his tentacles went numb. He tried to stand, but his legs buckled beneath him, sending him crashing back into his seat. Thompson, caught up in the excitement of the moment, didn't notice Xyloth's distress at first, but when he turned to congratulate his alien companion, he found the Zandarian slumped over, his skin a sickly shade of grey. Xyloth! Thompson shouted, his voice barely audible over the din of the crowd. Are you all right? But Xyloth couldn't respond. His chest heaved as he gasped for air, his heart pounding erratically. Thompson's face paled as he realized the severity of the situation. So we need a medic over here, he yelled, waving his arms frantically. Someone call 911. The celebration around them ground to a halt as people began to notice the commotion. A hush fell over the crowd as they watched Thompson desperately trying to rouse his alien guest. Within minutes, a team of emergency medical technicians arrived on the scene. They quickly assessed Xyloth's condition, checking his vital signs and administering oxygen. His heart rate is through the roof, one of the EMTs said, his brow furrowed with concern. We need to get him to a hospital now. Thompson watched helplessly as they loaded Xyloth onto a stretcher. 
his limbs hanging limply at his sides. The Zandarian's eyes were glazed and unfocused, his breathing shallow and rapid. As they rushed Xyloth out of the stadium and into a waiting ambulance, Thompson felt a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. He had brought the alien ambassador here to show him the best of human culture, but instead he had exposed him to its worst excesses. The ride to the hospital was a blur. Thompson sat in the back of the ambulance, watching as the EMTs worked to stabilize Xyloth. The Zandarian's skin had taken on a sickly greyish hue, and his tentacles twitched spasmodically. When they finally arrived at the emergency room, Xyloth was whisked away by a team of doctors and nurses. Thompson was left to pace the waiting room, his mind racing with worst-case scenarios. Hours passed before a doctor finally emerged to give him an update. Ambassador Xyloth is stable, she said, her voice calm and reassuring. He suffered a severe panic attack, brought on by the intense stress and overstimulation of the football game. Thompson let out a sigh of relief, his shoulders sagging. Can I see him? he asked, his voice hoarse. The doctor nodded, leading him back to Xyloth's room. The Zandarian lay in a hospital bed, his tentacles draped limply over the sides. His eyes were closed, but his chest rose and fell with steady breaths. As Thompson approached the bedside, Xyloth's eyes fluttered open. He blinked slowly, taking in his surroundings with a look of confusion. What happened? he croaked, his voice weak and raspy. Thompson pulled up a chair and sat down beside him. You had a panic attack, he explained gently. The doctors say it was brought on by the stress of the game. Xyloth closed his eyes, a look of shame crossing his features. I apologize for my weakness, he whispered. I should have been stronger. Thompson shook his head. No, Xyloth, I'm the one who should be apologizing. I brought you to that game without considering how overwhelming it might be for someone from a different culture. I put you in a situation that was far too intense and aggressive, and I'm sorry for that. Xyloth was silent for a long moment. His brow furrowed in thought. I knew that humans were a passionate species, he said at last, but I never realized just how much aggression and violence was woven into your culture. The way you celebrate brutality, the way you revel in chaos and disorder, it's so foreign to me. Thompson nodded, his expression somber. I know our ways must seem strange and even frightening to you, he said, but I promise you, Xyloth, there's more to humanity than just violence and aggression. We have art and music and literature. We have compassion and empathy and love. And I want to show you those things, too. Xyloth looked at him, his eyes searching. I want to believe that, he said softly. I want to believe that our species can find common ground, that we can build a future together. But after today, I don't know if I have the strength to face the challenges that lie ahead. Thompson reached out and took Xyloth's hand in his own. You're not alone in this, Xyloth, he said firmly. I'm here to support you, to help you navigate the complexities of human culture. And together, I know we can find a way to bridge the gap between our worlds. Xyloth managed a weak smile, his tentacles curling around Thompson's fingers. Thank you, James, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Your friendship means more to me than you know. As Thompson sat there, holding Xyloth's hand in the sterile hospital room, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. He knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult, that there would be many more obstacles and misunderstandings to overcome. But he also knew that he was willing to do whatever it took to make this alliance work, to forge a bond of trust and understanding between their two species. And so, with a deep breath and a determined nod, Thompson squeezed Xyloth's hand and prepared himself for the challenges that lay ahead. Come what may, he would stand by his alien friend, and together they would find a way to build a better future for both their worlds. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.